By the way, about World War I, although the, you know, gen uh, uh, another, you know, I have to acknowledge the rare films that were made uh, that were anti-war and all quiet on the Western Front uh, is a, an example of an ex absolutely extraordinary film. Uh, recently, I, I, I compared in some article I wrote about Saving Private Ryan, I compared Saving Private Ryan to All Quiet on the Western Front uh, about what I thought was the uh, essential uh, glorification of war despite the, the, the mayhem in Saving Private Ryan and a very absolutely diamond clear anti-war expression of All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, and then there are all these issues connected with class uh, and class conflict in America and class struggle in America. And yes, there are, we've had movies in which deal with uh, working class people, and, but it's always some individual person, the working class, who rises up out of his or her situation individually and makes it in American uh, society. Uh, but the stories of Americans who organize and get together uh, along class lines uh, to oppose the uh, powers that hold them down, uh, that, that has been very, very rare. Uh, you do not see films about the struggles of the, uh, of the textile girls, the girls who went to work in the textile mills of Massachusetts, of Lowell and Lawrence, uh, who, who went in the... Uh, <coughs> Well, it's a long, spans a long history uh, from the early 19th century, from the 1830s. It's a marvelous story there about the, the Lowell girls of the 1830s who organized and went on strike. Uh, and you will not, you'll not see films about, about uh, what they did. And you'll not see films about the, uh, all of the, this rich history of labor struggles that took place uh, in the United States. Because after all, uh, the American system set up by the Constitution and the, and, and the American political system uh, uh, and the Constitution of the United States so revered and so celebrated uh, did not grant any economic rights to the American people. Uh, did not grant the, you know, we, we very often forget that the Constitution gives political rights but not economic rights. It gives, uh, and even those political rights are circumscribed by the loss and the non-existence of economic rights. Because if you don't have, if, if you're not uh, wealthy, your political rights are limited, uh, even, though, even though they exist on paper in the Constitution. Uh, freedom of speech is something that exists there. Yes, it's, you have a political right of free speech, but how much free speech you have depends on how much money you have and what access to resources you have. But as far as economic rights, none of them in the Constitution. Uh, the right, I mean, here's the Declaration of Independence, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And how can you have uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness if you don't have the right uh, to food, to housing, uh, to health care, uh, and uh, and so working people all through American history have had to organize and struggle, go on strike, uh, declare boycotts, uh, face the police and the army and the National Guard, and some of those violent and dramatic scenes. Uh, uh, and uh, they had to do it themselves in order to win the eight-hour day, in order to somewhat uh, change their working conditions.